Y'all, it's Jaquille of Fashion Under 50, aka the Style Cooperative, and I'm here to show you how to make an Auntie Char kimono with this mermaid sequin fabric. So what you're going to need are new ballpoint needle pins. Don't use old ones, guys. Clips. The clips are very good, and you're going to need your rotary cutter. I changed that later on. And you'll see that you'll also need a marking pencil, water-soluble. Personally, that's my choice. So let's get started, okay? All right, what I'm going to do is show you guys how I laid out this fabric. It was very time staking because what I wanted to do was make sure that I had all of the sequins facing in one direction. And the reason that I needed them to face in one direction is because it makes it easier when you are folding. Did you see what I'm doing right there? When you're folding it, if it's crunched, you're going to be crunching your sequins. So you want to have them all in the same place. So I folded it in half lengthwise. And then I'm going to flip it over vertically so that you can see we'll have one square to work with. And that's how I'm going to start cutting out the process. Again, you want to make sure it's completely flat because that is going to help you in ease when you are cutting this material. So now that the material is laid flat, what I'm going to do is use my yardstick in order to measure the kimono sleeve as well as the body. Now I use my water soluble marker, like I said before, and normally for a kimono, you can go straight down, but instead I opted for going a slight A-line for this pattern. So instead of going straight down, I made a marker to go just slightly out. So as you can see, it gives it a bit of a swing instead of going straight down. And that kind of helped with, you know, creating a lot of flow with this. Once that was done, I put my place mat under it, my cutting mat, and I got ready to do some cutting. Now, here's where it got different. I love that rotary cutter. And when I started using the rotary cutter, I realized that that was going to dull my rotary cutter. So what I ended up doing was using scissors. You want to make sure that you're not using your fabric scissors, but in fact, you're using just regular scissors because cutting this is very dulling to scissors. Now, you also want to make sure that you're holding this taut. Remember, this is a time elapsed video, so it did take some time to cut this and you want to be patient. You don't want to rush through because you want to make sure you're cutting every piece equally so that that makes your sewing job a lot easier. So as you can see, I just went um, up the bottom and then I'm going down a sleeve. So it just takes a little bit more time, but it's definitely worth it. Like I said, hold it straight so that when you're done cutting, it is perfect and you don't have any uneven pattern pieces that you're working with. Once that's completed, you can actually see the body form show up. So now you see the whole body, the sleeves, and I'm using the clamps that I said that I purchased from jo Joann's Fabrics to hold the fabric together. What you should know is that sequin fabric, particularly mer mermaid sequin fabric, it's a heavier fabric and it's also very slippery. So you don't want to use straight pins for this one because you don't want to puncture your um your sequins in any way or damage the the flow of your sequins and the clamps actually just help hold it together because it's such a weighty fabric if you don't have the time to go and get clamps from joanne's fabric or your fabric store you can get them you can use um uh paper clamps now what i'm doing here is i'm actually making the opening for my coat and for my kimono and I'm actually also creating the neckline. And I do this equidistance by, use, by using a curved ruler so that it's not, um, so that the, the neckline isn't uneven. When you're cutting, like I said, you, you, you measure twice, you cut once, you wanna make sure that you're as symmetrical as possible. 
so that was just me making sure that it was sy symmetrical now i'm cutting up it was a little bit easier to cut one piece of fabric as opposed to two so i'm going to end up just cutting straight up and then when i get to the collar i'm going to turn and cut those pieces i actually ended up cutting a curve out of the back and you'll see that shortly to create more of just a comfortable neckline instead of just a straight neckline so you'll see i went over a little bit so that i could make sure that i'm cutting it perfectly. So once the cutting of the collar is complete, you can begin to see the kimono take shape and take form. That's what it looks like outside in. Opening it up, you can see what the right sides look like. And you can just get an idea of what your kimono is going to look like. This is very big and luxurious, but I wanted it dramatic and large. So this was a perfect size. You don't have to use as much fabric as I did. I used about three and a half yards to make this kimono. You can use less now let's get to the good stuff the sewing you do want to be mindful when you're doing this like I said you want to have brand new needles brand new needles are necessary because when you are sewing with sequins they will dull out that needle they can break needles can break luckily when I was sewing I didn't break any needles out sorry that it's not a clearer or closer version but that's as close as my um camera could get you want to make sure that you are taking your time when you are sewing your sequin fabric together. Like I said, it's very heavy, very slippery, and you don't want to make any mistakes. You don't want to run through it. You don't want to rush through it. The clamps help hold it together. Your hands are going to do the rest. So you're going to slowly follow the line, and it's about a half inch seam allowance, and you're just going to keep going through. One thing that I do want to say is that I had to um, use my seam ripper under the armhole because I moved too quickly and what ended up happening was is it got caught when I was turning from the sleeve into the bodice so you want to take your time when you're curving your sleeve to your bodice because you want to make sure that it doesn't get snatched up and it doesn't bunch up because if it bunches up it's a very able to be seen in your sequin material so we're just following through and when we're done you're going to see a pretty much finished product i was playing with the idea of putting a collar on it but we all know that kimonos do not have collars so no collar for me i did decide however that i was going to put a liner in this so what did i what i ended up doing was pinning um the smallest bit to turn it inside so that I knew, I knew where i could face my liner now i put the liner in and here's what i did learn this is this is key y'all fabri-tac would have been a better option and i ended up doing fabri-tac for the rest of it for the top part of the liner i ended up sewing it together and it was a lot harder and it was more time consuming it is possible to do it but fabri-tac is your better option when putting your liner into your kimono because it's less of a chance for you to mess it up with threading or sew sew down your sequins in a wrong manner so this was me doing the liner with with sewing it together and it's super close and you can see that's not even like five and five eighths of an inch that's like centimeters right there so because i wanted it to keep it so close to the edge and that takes a lot more work it's a lot more time consuming it would just be easier and better for your time to use fabric tack and i ended up using fabric tack for the rest of um keeping my liner into the coat so i'm just going to fast forward so that you can see what this looks like because this was me using the fabric tack for the rest of it I just lifted it up now that was sewn you can see that i just did the bottom and i moved all the way through now you'll, you'll still want to make sure that what you're doing is making sure that your sequins are still facing the correct um direction because i just felt like if you press it the wrong way fabric tack is it's a glue and it dampens your your material so you could possibly uh, stiffen the sequence going one way so I just be very careful and very sparing because it just took a few hours for this to be um, completely fixed I, I waited 24 hours so it's wash ready but we won't be washing this because they're sequins but I just lined it right through pressed it down and that's how I finished out the rest of lining this kimono